that all your parents and your names they are all registered in the, the, the your, your names and your parents id numbers are being given the people brought from Rwanda and the uh, uh, and the interahamwes from uh, Congo bring them Uganda give them national ID because Museven is preparing for the coming general election you understand so students 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 you are busy writing your A level exams you are not asking yourself where are the rest of the students with whom we started high school with? Where are the rest? Students, we are telling you in developed countries, people are not just out of school because of the lack of money. This is the digitized era. Museven abandoned and abolished and demolished all public institutions which were supposed to impart knowledge into the young ones of Uganda. Students, a degree from Makerere University is no longer recognized on the continent of Africa. It is no longer recognized in the, on a, a, in the global scale. Have you asked yourself that? Maybe because Museven denied you the access on the internet. You cannot search. Museven hikes the price of the data, of data. Students are not connected to the world. Students cannot research appropriately as they are supposed to. Students cannot, you know, cannot get knowledge as it is being exposed on the internet. All the things which were so hard to come across, it is available on the internet. Why is it, students, you are quiet when Museven cannot allow you to reach the internet? Students, National Inter Platform, led by His Excellency Robert Chagulani Sentamu, saw you starving and they came to your aid. When you were fed, maybe you get satisfied. We don't see the fire burning. It is the student revolution that change or that chases away this dictatorship. Students, 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 you have a very, very immense role to play, to play in this subjugation we are in. Students, university students, high school students, university students, high school students, It should be remembered or it should be reminded to you by your parents that Museven used to go and hijack kids from school and recruit them into militants. Museven, all those cases are impending on the International Criminal Court. Child soldier. Museven, you recruited a lot of children. Most of those people are not where to be seen. They missed education. The people kept quiet because it was war. And the little did they know that you were, you were the instigator of all the political instabilities as we're still enduring them today. For the past 40 years, it was you, Museven. But students, they never got a chance to get in the depth to the history and what was the cause of the war. Mr. Museven, you are scaring spiritual leaders to come and tell Chagulani Sentamu that if he does not agree on your demands, you're going to rag, I mean to, to wreak havoc in the country known as Uganda. Mr. Museven, we are not intimidated. Mr. Museven, you are not a Ugandan and you are not we are not to, to listen to your creeds anymore. We have passed that level of intimidation, Mr. Museven. What we are saying, leave Uganda alone in peace, Mr. Museven. You cannot reverse this. You cannot, Mr. Museven, irregardless of the armory you have, Mr. Museven, we know very well you are well equipped in terms of military hardware. But, Mr. Museven, we are well equipped with the truth of which does not run out of ammunition, Mr. Museven. 
It is known to you that you cannot kill all of us. Mr. Museven, it is known to you that more people are coming to speak the truth. We don't need too many words to speak the truth. Mr. Museven, we are telling you, free us, students. Museven has taken away all civil liberties. All the human rights, Museven have taken it away. The parliamentarians helped Mr. Museven to establish what he called as Public Management Act. That is unjust law. That is unjust law. Students, bear that in mind. That is unjust law. Public Management Act. Public Management Act. What do you mean by that? that two people fight people in order for them to meet they have to seek authorization from the police from the police oh they are supposed to inform the police that we are going to congregate there students let us learn how to interpret the words as opposed to translate them students in school students in school the discipline which were imparted into us has led us into this jeopardy or the conundrum of M7 because we expected men of nobility to speak the truth to power okay but they chose silence either they were fed by M7 and they are contented or they feared the death well knowing how brutal M7 he is, he does not hesitate to kill. He has been killing and he feels like whenever he closes his eyes, all the ghosts he killed, they are yanking him away, yanking him away. Every moment he closes the eyes, he cannot enjoy the spoil. You can see. He's a man who was always in the pamper, in his age, even though I never seen it. But according to the science and to the laws of nature, he must be with the pamper that all the men. Why doesn't he give us space that we can be led by the people with whom we have the same aspirations? We are not negating the leadership that came prior to Museven. Me, I have no credit that I can give to Museven. Not that I disrespect him, no, because it is not there. It is not there, people of the world, people of the world. The British, the British left him Lago Hospital as a gift to the people of Uganda. It is the British who constructed Makerere University as a gift to the people of Uganda. It was Idi Amin who constructed the Lero Station. It was Idi Amin who bought Uganda Airlines. It was Idi Amin who went to Britain and he could admire the, 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 the breed of cows in Britain. And when he bought some and they say, how are we going to transport them? Idi Amin bought Boeing, nine of them, to transport those cows there and then, as he did when he admired the soccer being telecast live. And he said, how is this possible? They told him, we do, we do have what they call a satellite. What he asked, he said, what does it take that this amount? He ordered Moses Ali, who is serving in Museveni's regime right now, to pay money. Thus, we are speaking with the world because of Idi Amini's satellite located there in Impoma. We had Uganda Airline because of Idi Amini's nationalistic understanding. Going abroad, admire things, come back and do it at home. There was no influx of immigration out of Uganda. People were not immigrating out of Uganda because the, I mean, the environment was welcoming for people to be more entrepreneurial. People are no longer have that vigor to start business. They don't have they don't have that love to start business. With the moment you start business, Museveni's son-in-law, Luabogo, He's going to send somebody. Whenever you start this, Museveni's son-in-law, Edwin Kalujire, is going to come. Whenever you do this, 
Most of his brother, Toyota, is going to come and comes to get all the minds of God. So the entire country is being run by a business, by, by, by a family. And it wouldn't be a problem if this family, they were gifted in some sort of talents or some sort of intellect. But we don't see, we don't see anything. These people are not beneficial to the entire society. No. These are parasites. Students, we need to fight parasites. Students, we need to fight these parasites. Museven took the rights out of the people of Uganda. The rights of personal integrity. Museven does not allow people to think. Museven does not allow people to own properties. Museven does not allow people to engage in too competitive business. Entrepreneurial as they are. We are in the foreign land because of the environment Museven created. We wouldn't be in the foreign land. No, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here this long. We have learned, we have learned a lot of things from South Africans. We want to implement these things. We want to reorganize our society. Students, do not sit on your butts. Do not sit on your butts. You can look at the utility. You can look at all the utilities. Why the price of water is too high? Why the price of education is too high? Why the price of electricity is too high? Why is it everything is in rivers? And you're still contented? With the education you receive, with the education you receive, please students, ask your teachers on the board that there is a mechanic saying, are we really going to be this education is going to be beneficial to us. We are not saying don't go to school. But at this juncture, get out of the classes. Let us fix the country. Let us fix the country. Let us fix the country. You cannot lose anything. For 90 days, three months are enough from seven to be out of power. What we need is numbers on the street. Museven to go away. What we need, those are the numbers. Most of them to go away. Students, if you keep quiet and then a civil war starts, my friend, you won't study. You won't study. You won't study. You won't study. I was four years when Museven came into power. We were not studying. We went into Exodus. We went into Exodus. We were witnessing when Museven is eating all the livestock in Kamenyamigo farm, in Bukakata farm, in all the farms. Museven ate all those things. I was studying at Chabakuza Primary School. And I remember that field and the Catholic Church, it was where the cows were being slaughtered, right? Museven did not own a thing. Where did he got all the cattle he has right now? The man has got a ranch, ranches and ranches of cattle. A man, free the poor, old man. Where did you get all those things? We know exactly you confiscated all the governmental parastatals which were initiated by the governments of which you fought so very bad. Mr. Museven, you will never you will never erase history of Idi Amin Dada and Mr. Museven, the first thing we do when we're done with you, we will repatriate the remains of our loved nationalistic leader. Idi Amin Dada, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to illuminate the light in you. Idi Amin Dada, I report before you, your son, your son, your son. He was involved in kidnapping Ugandans during the wake of March to Parliament 20, 2020, marching to Parliament. July 23, July 23rd, this very year. You can imagine, Mafia Simpuga, on that very day, 
23rd July 2024 Mathias Mpuga you are responsible for trapping all people in Masaka telling them that you are taking them to march to parliament through your agents all those peoples they are nowhere to be seen Mathias Mpuga all those cases are on pending and according to the information we received from ASP Asime, you students of Uganda, listen. This is what Museven, Mathias Simpuga, and Charles Peter Maiga, they are planning to do to the vision bearers, the national inter platform. This is what they plan to do. According to ASP Asime, apostle of Bible and politics, he said that Mathias Simpuga and Charles Peter Maiga, after access, assessing the third country tour, they told him seven is that you know what? There is no any other option but to round up Chagulang Sentamu people as we did in Kalangala. As we did in Kalangala, remember they rounded a lot of people, close to a thousand in Kalangala. All the honorable people they brought into the court. It is this 30 something or 50 who were with Chagulanyi Sentam, people who are known that these ones are figures known to the general public. Now, the rest of Kalangalians, or those islanders, Sese Islands, they all killed them. Mathias Simpuga, <coughs> Mathias Simpuga, my friend, my friend, the, the sun is still coming out. The sun is still coming out. There is no crime will ever go. Any punishment, any punishment, any punished, Mr. Mathias Mpuga. And the punishment of God Almighty goes to the fifth generation of the perpetrator, Mathias Mpuga. This is inescapable. If you had listened to what the young man told you, that you have made a grave mistake, apologize and seek for forgiveness, then resign. Mathias Simpuga, you would have been reinstated and you would, you would have been working in national executive as a decision maker. But you, you, you refused because you are being tormented by bestial instincts. You are bestial your instincts. Thus, you are not superior to the brutes philosophically. And you are a brute yourself. You are a brute yourself. You are proposing to Museven to, to Museven to round up again as you did in Sese Island all Chagulany Sentam people that you should be able to isolate him you are, you are joking Mathias Simpuga Charles Peter Maiga Medadi Rubega Segona you are all joking this is irreversible there is no sort of intimidation can reverse us the people of the world, these are the people we are dealing with. Students in Uganda, please, this should be born in your mind that amidst of all this impasse of leadership for the past four decades, Museven is the sole cause of all this subjugation, suffering, and the disappearance of humanity. Students, this is Museven in his castigating this is M7 in his castigating of the then administrator of Obote. Remember, Obote is the one who recruit, recruited M7 because of his fearful of Buganda Kingdom, right? Obote recruited M7 on the recommendation of Julius Kambalage Nyerere. Because Kambalaga Nyerere, history indicates that never liked Buganda Kingdom or because of its civilization, right? So they did whatever they could to abolish the kingdom. But little did they know that the kingdom was established by God. You can do nothing about it. Students in school in 1985, this is what Museven said in his castigation of the then Obote Militon Obeto Buete, the former president of the Republic of Uganda. Museven speaks. This is how General Museven and NRA described the judiciary under Obote. I extracted this one 
document from the page of the Secretary General of the National Unity Platform, which David Lewis Lubongoya. Museven states, in a fascist regime, the judiciary is only a manipulated tool for dictators to carry out their despotic will. For the judicial, for the judicial service only serves the purpose of giving the fascist regime a technical semblance of legality in its operations. The weakest and the most incompetent men are appointed to keep positions in the judicial system because of their willingness to bend the law according to the dictates of the fascist regime. Museven is castigating Obote, his master. Any men of integrity and professionals standing found on the benches are harassed and humiliated. Somali dismissed or demoted on their enmities withdrawn to break their firmness and force them to submit to the dictates of the regime. Museven speaks. Meanwhile, Obote continues to pack the benches with his psychophants and relations. He has, for instance, reappointed Oteng to the bench in spite of that he had been discontinued by the Judicial Services Commission for incompetence and unfit and fit and general misconduct. An attempt was made to kill Mr. Justice Sekandi. Mr. Museven, how many justice or judges have you killed? How many men of nobility have you coerced? How many men of nobility, Mr. Museven, have you coerced? Mr. Seven, how many men of nobility have you coerced? Do you know how many men of nobility in exile? Mr. Seven, do you know how many men of nobility in exile? Mr. Seven, you said you were fighting for peace. Mr. Seven, that was a lie. Mr. Seven, that was a lie. It is you who destabilized all the peace Uganda had. It is you, Mr. Seven. Your master, Obote, said he doesn't see any legitimate reason for you to fight for Uganda because you are a refugee in Uganda. Mr. Seven, that is a crime. You, you waged a war that claimed innocent lives when the constitution never allowed you because you are a foreigner. You understand, Mr. Seven? You understand, Mr. Seven? Tell me, how are you going to escape that crime? It is not you, but the ideology, the entire group which had an ideology. Mr. Seven, we are telling you that Mr. Seven, you demolished all the parastatal companies which were initiated by the governments came prior to yours. Mr. Seven, we are telling you, we are telling you, Mr. Seven, we are not letting go of this. In the wake of coffee, dear brothers and sisters, in the wake of coffee, dear brothers and sisters, Mr. Seven, Mr. Seven lied at the people that he was the sole man who can control the things Uganda has. Mr. Seven, we are above of those lies. The people of Uganda, let us do more. Let us engage into the struggle. Let us engage into the struggle. It is a responsibility of which you cannot escape. I remember I was listening to one of teacher of mankind and he said that you can ignore responsibility, but you cannot ignore the consequences of ignoring responsibility. Meaning that, even if you choose silence, Museven will squeeze you, will squeeze you in your silence. If you choose silence, Museven will continue to squeeze you. Museven will continue to squeeze you, brothers and sisters, students, university students, university students, show us the energy of the food you were fed. My brother, Sibala Angira, but you are reluctant. You are very, very, very reluctant. Senior Museri, Senior Museri. 
tuge nande muwele makerele yo tuagala kuri la kuwele wako nga tuge nda kuchi kupari ya menti bloody students don't be a disappointment don't show us that you are being fed on Museveni's venom of choosing silence do not be do not have confidence of speaking on when you are national inter platform enclosed area no you speak on the street individually by communicating with others you join chambogo you join makerere you join nakawa you bring KIU, you bring all of this Museven came out and started bragging that when Museven took power, we had only uh, we didn't have any private university. Can you imagine Museveni's men are coming on national TV thinking they are logically sound? A man stated with grey air. A man stated and said that when Museven took power, we didn't have any private university, right? But now we have almost 30 or 40 universities. There is a stupid number he came up with. You understand? But now if we look at these national universities, what is their performance compared to the private universities? That is what we are saying, that most of civil servants, the cabinet ministers of Museveni's regime, they are all business competitors. You understand? And the law does not allow that. They invest money, taxpayers' money, and register the business into their siblings. You understand? So a man is bragging and sounding as if he's giving Museveni credit that Museveni demolished all national higher learning institutions and he introduced the private ones the people of uganda does that sound logical because when we go back into philosophy philosophy reminds us philosophy reminds us that logic it is the science that governs rational thinking Okay? Now, was this man being rational enough to say that national universities are on a decline, but private universities are on a rise? Was he rational? Because he's all, he's all, he was old in age. Okay? And we all know from time immemorial that all the age it is an axiom of leadership that a man who is old as I am can speak something and that thing can be emulated by the young ones. So are these young ones supposed to emulate vices or vacuous? You understand? This is why God is so smart and he knew exactly what Ugandans were lacking. And he had it in store. That was Chagulany Sentamu. Being a man who is loved, being a man who is celebrated, being a man who is an artist, he said that never emulate any vice you see in me, but I implore you to emulate each and every vacuum you see in me. Do not take bad examples you see from me only take good examples you see in me now this man is telling the general public that Museven is to be hired because he has brought private universities when national universities the universities he found in place they are all dilapidated they are performing it is declining rapidly brothers and sisters that is the goodness of philosophy because philosophy said that its mission is to establish the relation of manifested things to their invisible ultimate cause or nature right and its ideal its function ideal it is to serve as a stabilizing influence 
in human thought and by virtue of its intrinsic nature it should prevent a man from establishing unreasonable codes of life now give me one of seven psychophant that can come before the general public and speak with a reasonable code of life they are all unreasonable codes of life they bring to the society so meaning these people are not sounding philosophically so when we deploy the discipline of philosophy we are able to understand their tilted mind how they function brothers and sisters students students philosophy is a discipline which is classified in six headings the first one being metaphysics which deals with abstract subjects such as cosmology theology and the nature of being that is the first heading the second heading it is called logic 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 the science the science that governs rational thinking rationality and righteousness makes a man spiritual remember 